Hey everyone, 343 have just released part 2 of Halo Infinite Season 1 Outcomes Report. Today I want to show you all the changes coming to the customization, shop, battle pass, progression, challenges, ultimate rewards, events, theatre, observer mode, and more. So, without wasting any of your time, let's get into it. 343 first spoke about cross-core customization, and here's what they said. Enabling customization across different armor cores has been the largest point of feedback when it comes to customization. We agree that there is room to have better customization by lifting core restrictions where possible. For right now, we're pursuing options that will allow players to use certain customization items on different cores. Due to the way the core system was initially built, getting items to work on various cores will take time, may not even be possible for all items, and will likely require us to do it piece by piece. As we investigate what expanding to cross-core customization would require from a tech perspective, our initial focus is on enabling as many helmets, visors, and armor coatings across different armor cores as possible. In short, our goal is that we will be incrementally moving to a model that has coatings and visors working across all cores, with helmets and chest gear working across cannon cores as our first focus changes to make in the system. Now, I've got to say, I'm really happy to see that. Cross-core customization will allow players so much more freedom when it comes to building their Spartan, and even just being able to have helmets, visors, and armor coatings across the different cores will go a long, long way. If there's anyone here that reached 152 in Halo 5, you're about to be quite happy with this next part. Last, but certainly not least, we've seen the requests to have the Watchdog and Redshift armor coating more closely reflect the initial renders we released in 2020. We want to make this right in a future update. 343 have also said that they want to have more consistent value across different offerings in the shop. They did touch on a desire for a career progression system separate from the battle pass, and they said a career progression system is in the design phase right now. We want to nail it out of the gate, and that's going to take some time. See, this is the one thing I was really hoping we'd see in Season 2. Maybe we'll get it still during Season 2, but a career progression system is one of the most important things for a Halo game to keep people playing the game. They say it's going to take some time, but we've given them enough time so far to get this done. So I really do hope the career progression system comes out way sooner than we think, because as I said, a progression system is so damn important for a Halo game. Then they said, additionally, we know there's a desire for per match XP, which also leverages performance, to plug into the system as well as the battle pass. Okay, this next bit is actually quite good. For season two's battle pass, we want to focus on improving the value we provide to the players on both the free and premium tracks. To do so, the free battle pass will contain even more customization content than season 1, including the Lone Wolf's armor core early on in the track. As for the premium track, we've added credits as another reward tier, and will allow players to earn up to 1,000 credits. Additionally, season 2 will also have better weekly ultimate rewards and improved event passes, giving players plenty of opportunities to earn customization content for free. So this bit here is really good. Season 2's battle pass will be far better than season 1's, and it's going to have a lot more content on offer, instead of XP boosts and challenge swaps, which no one really cares about and you'll be able to earn a thousand credits. I know some of you guys may say, well, why couldn't it be 2,000 or 3,000 credits? But at least this is a start. A thousand credits is better than no credits, so I will take that. Um, I'm just happy to see credits actually coming to the battle pass. Following on from that, 343 did talk about challenges. Now, I want to highlight this one bit. They said, lastly, as of this week, we've removed the Killjoy challenges from all challenge decks, and you won't be seeing it again anytime soon. That was the one challenge everybody hated, so I'm very happy to see that removed. 343 also talk about the value of ultimate rewards, and how they're pushing to have far better rewards in Season 2, which is really good to hear. I've made a few videos on this, as I'm sure you guys have seen, talking about why better rewards are so important for the game. So, in Season 2, they said they will focus on content like coatings, visors, and stances, and no longer have emblems or backdrops through the course of the season. Gotta say, that is really good news. And finally, 343 touched on Theatre and Observer mode. Theatre and Observer will have updates to address overall stability, issues caused by viewing multiple films in a row, and problems that arise when observing multiple matches in a row. So, all in all, I've got to say, I'm actually quite pleased with this update. I think a lot of these changes getting made for Season 2 are actually quite good. Of course, a career progression system is something that we desperately need for this game, and not really having any time frame for that is quite scary, but everything else I'm actually really happy about. So I'll leave it there, guys. If you enjoyed this video, keeping you up to date with everything Halo Infinite, be sure to drop a sub. I'd really appreciate it, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a good one.